notes in my research. This is the first of the blog post I've done. This particularly is the one that I spoke of in the introduction, which was requested by my supervisor. So it begins with a short preamble which I added to the original document and then pasted the document in whole. I apologise for any mispronunciation of names I may do. I am myself dyslexic and I find that words and names that I haven't actually heard out loud are a particular challenge to pronounce. So, shall we begin? This is a 1000 word piece I was asked to produce detailing the direction of my research. Given the brevity of I did not have the chance to be particularly subtle, so take as noted I am not accusing Felix Gonzalez Torres of having power or of setting out to exploit with this artwork. That's more of an issue taken care of in footnote. Notes towards a theory of artist-audience relationships within the context of hierarchical relationships, symbolic violence and participation as unpaid labour. As I'm reading this, this is simply a reproduction of an original post. And the post simply has me saying things like, you know, I'll need to research this more. So I'm going to keep those in because this is as much a document as anything else. This short piece constitutes the first attempts to formalise a theory of art, which has informed my thinking for quite some time and has begun to crystallise as I've researched my final project. 1. A short synopsis of my proposition. My proposition is that the position of artist as arbiter of meaning is an unearned hierarchy which places audiences in a subservient position in which the role is to uncover and make explicit the meaning of the work. As such, I argue, the artist is using the unpaid labour of the audience to create cultural capital. References to this remain unread at this point, but would obviously follow the do and those who have developed this theories further, or even actual financial capital. As a bulwark against the financialization of art and its envelopment within the model of late stage capitalism, the French theorist Nicolas Bourat, probably mispronounced there, developed the theory of relational aesthetics. Bullard 1998, which focuses on the intersubjective relationship that art objects arouse in visitors. Chow, 2013, page 52. I will expand on this theory in the next section, though it's through its application to a particular celebrated participatory artwork. Felix Gonzalez Torres's untitled Portrait of Ross in LA, Gonzalez Torres, 1991, and show how Burad's work does not remove art from the world of late stage capitalism, but merely repositions it within said structures and exasperates issues of agency, symbolic violence, and labour. The final section of this summary will discuss how I have addressed this issue in the past with reference to particular pieces, and how the work I am undertaking may constitute a move towards an act of liberation. 2. The less Felix can say to rest in the problem of labour. At this point there's a footnote, so I'll read that within context. The footnote reads, For the sake of brevity, the complexities of the artist-audience relationship have been compacted here, and our work discussed has been chosen for how easily it shows how some of the issues of labour are enacted. In the case of Untitled Portrait of Ross in LA, the majority of artistic work within the gallery system becomes a major issue, but as I with the limits of this short piece. 
Balad's theory of relational aesthetics calls for artists to abandon forms of art that serve the dehumanising, marketable world of late capitalism and instead explore the relationship, relationships between audiences and the artworks they experience. He defines this theoretical framework as an aesthetic theory consisting of judging artworks on the basis of their interhuman relations that they may pre represent, produce or prompt. Roulard 1998 112. One of the artists he studies in detail is Felix Gonzalez Therese, and it is through his work untitled Portrait of Ross in LA that we can see the ways in which this theoretical framework can fall short of its goals. Untitled Portrait of Ross in LA was a 1991 installation which consisted of a pile of commercially available rat sweets piled in the corner of a gallery. The weight of the pile, 175 pounds, corresponds to the average weight of an adult male. Art Institute of Chicago, no date. And visitors to the exhibition were asked to take one or more sweets from the pile. In doing so, they enact the process of dying, the process of an adult wasting away and becoming nothing. By taking part in the exhibition, Visitors enact this meaning, they enact the concept created by the artist and complete the piece's meaning. Though this fits well within the framework of artists to examine the relationship, relationships between people, though this fits well within Burad's framework of artworks that examine the relationship, relationships between people and the works they experience, questions can be raised about the relationship of artists to audience and that the artwork is finally realised through the labour of others, through the unpaid labour of others. This constitutes an act of symbolic violence. A privileged member of a hierarchical system, the artist, enacting the privilege upon the less privileged member of the hierarchical system, the audience. In no point in this exchange can the audience assert their own interpretation upon the work and all they can gain from is a vanishingly small amount of cultural capital, which is minuscule in relation to the amount gained by the artist through their labour. We remember Felix Gonzalez Therese, but not those whose labour created the meaning of his artwork, just as we remember the industrialist, but not the names of the workers who created the capital. A further parallel can be found in the works of Lehrang Culture, and Pamela Atchell, who studied workers in fashion retail and the degree to which they internalised the brand identity, a process they called Doing the Brand. Kutcher and Atchell, 2017, it is possible to argue that the degree to which individuals may decide to give their labour to the completion of an artwork may be a similar phenomenon where they choose to identify so strongly with a brand in this case art and being cultured, did they internalise the demands of the person demanding their labour. 3. Finding a way through to an art of liberation. Rather than provide meaning for audiences to uncover and or complete through their labour, it may be possible to create works that are open-ended enough to allow audiences to form their own meaning from the work provide the materials needed for an audience member to create their own associations with the work, to envisage a new way of creating interhuman relations and new forms of those relations. The liberation of listener audience members to form their own meanings and encourage them to share those with others has been a subject I've been interested in since proposing a form of soundtracking a film whereby the viewer of the film chooses where blocks of sound are situated within the runtime of the film through an interactive DVD filled in 2013. This was refined in Notes Towards Western Wind filled in 2020 and RGB filled in 2021 where the experience of the installation is dependent on the choices of individual audience members and where the final form of the piece becomes reliant 
and their choices rather than an instruction which they are given and must carry out to get the work meaning. For this project I will undertake a series of three piano improvisations which will be broadcast live over the internet with live feedback from the audience who will be invited to inform the development of the improvisation. In doing so they will become partners in its formation, part of the ensemble. In doing so I hope I'll be able to create an environment where the hierarchical relationship between artist and audience is minimised and where the labour of the audience becomes a form of exploration and play.